So now we're gonna finally do the soil change that we wanted to do four hours ago. So let's go. <laughs> yes. Make sure it's the right size, I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. You should be able to do it with one hand, just make sure it doesn't twist sideways on you. Wait, I wanna go. Yeah, no, you're correct. You're correct, yeah. <laughs> 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 Probably not been out in a while. Let's try with two hands. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, we never got any nitro gloves. Yeah. How am I, gonna <laughs> I guess I can just rotate it with the. Yeah, and we're gonna lose the plug in the pan, I guess, and we can fish it out later. <laughs> this is why I wanted to the do the easier it way form. would be one that doesn't have a freaking recessed oil plug. Yes, it's not a nice design. It sounds like. It needs to be a freaking hex sticking out the bottom so you can get to it and you just buzz it out with your fingers and... Is this gonna even hit the pan? Uh, I'll make sure of that. Please, please. Okay. Depends on how much of a gush, gush force it's gonna have. I do not know. This oil's old as f <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be swearing, I'm on camera. Exactly how old is that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us a comparison to what kind of age we're talking about? I don't know, but it was supposed to be serviced at 294. There you go, you're good. Wipe your hand if you got it on it. Ta-da! It's like Hershey's milk chocolate. Really? It's very brown. Did you notice? Any water first? I don't think so. Well, that'll be something to check with the pan clean. Uh, nothing wet. It's got oil residue on it. Alright, well, when you're draining it out of it, you're checking for water, right? You need to know that. Did you get that on camera or striking? <laughs> no, I think, I think I got it, yeah. Okay, so you take over here now, and I'm going to let it down, because we want as much oil as we can to come out. Well, I gotta get it out from under. Here, I'll hold it back to you. You want to go kind of quick here though, so that we can get the get the oil as much of the oil plugged out of it as you can. You didn't lose the drain plug. Look at that! Wow! That's and he did. Uh, he did it with a socket. Too. That's higher level. That's tricky. Uh, that's a new calling. What's the? Uh, so if you watch, you should get more oil flowing as you lower it with the pan level, right? Yeah. You're making contact, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a dark brown, reddish color. Really? Yeah. Oh, you got the little washer there, too, that didn't go in the oil pan either. Uh, that's, that's what we call skill. That's not fun. <laughs> Having to fish the plug out of the oil is the fun part. And the washer, too. Okay, so that's good to go. Leave it drain for a while, and then once it's not dripping anymore, we can do your sensor. What's the filter like? I have no idea. Uh, it's, it's up the top. It's, it's up a, in the top. It's a canister like the Mark IVs, I think. Oh, okay. So yeah. we're going to adjourn for lunch now, and when we return, we're going to do the sensor and put new oil in it. And new filter. All right, so the other thing we got to do underneath this 328i, so we drain the oil, and now we want to remove this oil level sensor. So when you first start the car in the morning, uh, you may end up getting a yellow oil light that comes on for like 15 to 20 seconds and then turns off. So when that happens, you have a faulty oil level sensor. Now, the Bentley service manual basically says nothing about this part. And my only experience about it is watching like a five minute YouTube video in which the guy changed it. So, on this sedan model, all we have to do here From there. Uh, to remove the sensor wires, the, uh, uh, the electrical wires that connect it to the computer, is to squeeze the two clips on the side. And then I'm going to use And then it should come out. Uh, that wasn't too bad, really. I just basically what I did was I used the flat tip screwdriver to get inside it, 
and just kind of push on it a little bit on each side, alternating until it just popped off. So the next thing we want to do here is we want to remove the three bolts. Um, so on this car, they're pretty corroded, to be honest, um, which is Okay, so there's the third bolt. So now the sensor should just pull right out, like so. And that's all it is. It's just the kind of aluminum bottomed piece with then a kind of a stick coming out of it, like that. So this is the new sensor. Now it is technically a different uh, part number. It looks exactly the same, so it's gotta be the same thing. Um, it's, got, it's got a seal on it already. It does? Yeah. Where's the, where's the new one? Yeah. Maybe the other one didn't have an O-ring on it. No, these, these, these already have the seal on them. Oh God, so yeah. I spent nine bucks for nothing. <laughs> I would still keep it. So you want me to put some oil on that for you? Well, I guess so, yeah. You ready to put in it? Put yep. it in rather? So now what you want to do is you want to place the new one right back into the hole where the old one came out. I'm very much Captain Obvious. The bolt clean on the sides for the O-ring to run on. Well, we didn't clean that, no. Make sure there's no crumbs on the... Can I have a shop towel? Well, I don't care, as long as it can wipe off. And if, it's, uh, if it's got rust shale, you might want a little sandpaper or whatever to... That's, it's it's a little scraper. It's, it's aluminum, so... Oh, yeah, it should, should be too bad. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's clean so that all it doesn't end up with dirt between the O-ring and the lock. Okay. Yeah, essentially goes right in the bottom of the pan. In the pan? Right in the bottom of the pan. Huh. Okay. Here's the... This is really awkward with, this co with my coat on to do this. Make sure the plug's out of the way. It doesn't look like it's seated all the way. There you go. There you go. Now you're Fits there. like a charm. So here. Here it comes. So now we're going to torque it to eight foot pounds. Uh, five. Five foot pounds. Five foot pounds. Or a hundred, or what did I say, 60, 60 inch pounds? To me, that seemed less than it was before. Well, and then what you do is once you've done that, then you put your little quarter inch ratchet back on and you see how much it moves in your hand, how easily compared to what it was done to them. Work that in, so you can knock your hand too before it gets anywhere else. 
Where did I put the fragile wrench? Where did I put the wrench? It's right down in the area. Okay. Okay. Right into the socket. So now, because there is no torque value in the manual, I'm just going to see if this is similarly tight to what it was when I removed it. It should be easier to carry because the original will be stuck to some degree. I guess that didn't easy. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, need that torque wrench back. Your only concern is it not fall off. It's not keeping it from leaking. The overhead's doing that. So yeah, just do a couple clicks on each and then go around and do one more, one more, one more each and then we can And then after that, final thing we want to do here is put the sensor wire back on. Probably could have put dielectric grease on that, but no point bothering now. Just put it in until it snaps into place. You can hear a little pop, and there you go. So yeah. now, so a while drain plug next, and it should be just to the right of your body there, kind of back behind your shoulder, I think. The drain plug should be there. I don't see it. Uh, I thought it was over there. It's here. Where is it? So I use that, uh, use this shop towel to clean up the the uh, kind of the hole in the side of the block where the plug goes. I should probably switch sides so I can see what I'm doing here. Yep. Okay. So there's your drain plug. Take all this stuff out of here. So, you just want to start turning this. A couple clicks, and there you go. Alrighty, so we're here to do the oil filter now. So, the filter takes a 36 millimeter socket, or the uh, if you have the special filter cap tool which is like four or five inches in diameter but we don't have that um but since we don't have a 36 either we use the one in 7 16 which seems to fit it quite well i guess that's the imperial version of 36 mils it's close approximately yeah. so greg untorked this before we went on camera here just to make sure that it fit well enough so i'll just finish loosening this now So it actually left the filter behind, which is great. Um, I think the filter tore in half. Because hmm. what's that in there? It's part of the filter. That's half the filter. So this filter is way past due. I'm not really sure. So how to yeah, that, that is not supposed to be in there. That's all the paper wrapping for the actual filter as I drip oil everywhere um, for the filter uh, paper. So yeah, we're gonna try and figure out how to get the rest of the filter out now. It could be challenging. We had known when we bought the car that it was overdue for service. Um, the reason why we'd left it this long is because winter happened. Yeah, I know. We had to no work. way to lift it until today. So, uh, in terms of getting the rest of this filter out of there, um, which I'll show you. Try to show you. Holy smokes! You should just take the thing out of the mount when you go to do something. Like that. I know, but it's hard to get it back in. So you guys should be able to see that. So we have the rest of this filter just stuck in there. And so I think what's gonna happen here is we're gonna use pliers to try and pull it out. Um, we can just... Oh dear. It's probably just gonna fall oh dear. piece by piece. That's so unfortunate. I, I personally hate this kind of oil filter. I much prefer the screw on ones. It's not what I was hoping for. Yeah, you can, you can see that mess in there. 
coming out in pieces. Let me get you a shot. Okay, I'll just put it on this for now. I don't know how we're gonna get a hold of the bottom part of it. Those aren't supposed to come off of that. Well, it's clearly like so disintegrated. And I really don't want uh, pieces of this going in the engine either as it breaks apart here into chunks. The question is, how are we gonna get the bottom ring of the filter out of there? I don't know, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I have less experience with this than you do. Neither of us have any BMW I have, experience. I have no experience with what just happened here. I've, I've never, never seen, seen anything that. like this before. Never seen that before. That's not supposed to be stuck in there like that. It might come out easily. I don't know. I don't know how this rest of this part comes out. Let's see if. Oh, wow. That is brutal. I have never seen that before. Jeez. <laughs> like maintenance people. Uh, the funny part is, is the main, the service schedule for this was only 3,000 kilometers ago, but it sat so long, I think, that it just started disintegrating. It's gotta be an age thing, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there's a piece in there. I'm pretty sure there's that piece out. and that piece have to come out. I just don't know how we're gonna get them out without destroying stuff. We can, I think that comes apart in the service manual. I can look that into that. How to get this cage out of here? Yeah, that'd be good. Let me go consult it. Cause we got little pieces of uh, filter filament in here that are gonna end up in the oil if we don't clean it out. So. The other part can come out too, out of the engine. Okay. started to move and then it got stuck. Doing a very thorough oil change at this point. There she goes. Holy smokes. Hope you can get that back in there now. Yeah, should be able to. Okay. There's your filter. Hengst. Made in Germany. Energetic. It wasn't even a hand filter. Hand filter is the OEM filter for this car. Man, man like that, I mean, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I made sure I compared between German parts and Amazon. This and oil like color color is very concerning. Um, BMWs are known to have. It's just old, I guess. That kind of milky yeah. cheese yeah. there. Right. BMW thing, you know. It's a 22 year old BMW thing. Well, Greg wants to get an E30. Yes, E30. He thinks maintaining this is going to be troublesome. <laughs> it's 
So this can go back into here now. And the new filter, I think, just kind of slips on. Shows. We have to change all three of those O-rings first. I assume they came in the past. Yep, that's what I showed here. So if you want to get them out, you can save this to the O-rings. It's actually only a washer and one O-ring. Oh, that's for the drain plug, I think. Where's the rest of the O-ring? I guess we're not changing the lower O-rings because we don't have any other ones. And we're just changing the big O-ring. Yeah, which probably doesn't need to be changed either, but we'll change it anyways. Uh, let's just be on the safe side for that. So, we need a little screwdriver for that. Just the black piece of rubber. That one is white. Just different brands, I guess. I would still keep this as a spare. It's very pliable still, actually. Hmm. So, it's actually more pliable than the new one. Yeah, I think it's maybe a different material too. All right, so then this one, I'll just put some more. Uh, we'll do it right before we put it into the housing. This uh, casting's got enough oil on it already. It should be okay to put on. You've graduated from shade tree mechanics now. We're in a shop, <laughs> we're in a building. Better at least than that side. There's no shade tree in the winter. Well, there is. It's, it's, a, freeze tree. Tree. it's a freeze tree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, geez, how do we get oil on over? We've got oil on everything. And it's yucky oil, too. It's not regular gas oil. It's weird. Very old oil. So, much we did not skip. I think it goes that side up, doesn't it? Because that's the the other one was like that. Correct. The other one was lettering up. Normally, it freaking tells you. Which I don't think it matters. On this. I think because it goes, it either goes outside in through the filter or inside out, so it doesn't matter which. But let's just put lettering up because that's how the other one was. Right. It's pretty snug fit. I understand why I couldn't get it off. All right, so we just need a little bit of new oil for the big O-ring, and then it can go back in. Yeah, we'll go in. But should be loads. Just needs a little bit. You don't want to ever put a dry O-ring in, or it's just going to tear the rubber when you tighten it. So. And like the drain plug, this is also 18 foot pounds to tighten. Make sure it's not going to fall off the side. Oh my car, God. Yeah. So we slip it in, like so. Here to teach because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, so there's a torque wrench, you get your socket. All right, so torque wrench set to 18 foot pounds or 25 newton meters as it says on it for those of you in Europe. And it's already tight. Yeah. Now, what you want to double check just because the number is so low is does the O ring actually completely seat? I think it did. Uh, let me bring the camera and we can show you. Yeah, that's that's good. As you can see, there's still a gap between the, the casting and the cap that it's not tightened all the way. If there's enough resistance on the O-ring, like say if you forgot to put oil on the O-ring, you might get to 18 foot-pounds before it even bottoms. So in this case, we're good to go. So if you want to go on with starting to put some oil in, I'll get all this other oil mess cleaned up. You may want to go from the fender and pour it from the fender. 
So this isn't a very big funnel, but it, I don't trust myself to do it without one. Yeah, they're trying to hit this small hole. <laughs> it's not much of a bigger hole to be honest. Mm. So my dad always goes from the side, like this. Of course, I'm very awkward, so I don't really know how best to do this. Yeah, you want the spout high so that it doesn't gurgle on you. I would go, of course, you're the, you're the other hand, I guess. Can you do it from the other hand? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not very well coordinated. Oh, shit. Yeah, and you want to tip the spout up high. It's starting to come out there. You can rest your rest the bottom of the jug. It's just about to start coming out here. It's going to be like water. There you go. And now you're off. So this is a five liter jug, um, which is great because the car is six and a half liters. So it's one jug and then a liter and a half out of the next one, which is great. A lot of jugs are 4.73 liters or one US gallon, which is great if you're American. <laughs> Four, five liters plus liters. You're just gonna do one, okay? Yeah, that's good. And then you can always add the half later. On the side of pretty much all oil jugs, there's this kind of an inaccurate measuring yeah. scale. And so to fully fill this car, we want it to be three and a half, technically. We're just under four. Uh, we're gonna set the car the rest of the way down and then try to put the rest in. Um, it's a very important you don't have too much or too little oil in your car. Too much, you drown out the bottom of the camshaft. Too little, it can't pump the oil, which causes problems too. So we went slightly past, we're gonna try it. Should be fine, they have a slight range you can go over or under. Not supposed to be pressure. Uh, let's see where she is. Uh, well, this one isn't going to be very accurate. You're supposed yeah, to wipe it off. There's another one. Please be in the range. Ah, it's pretty much perfect. Maybe a little. Yep. Nope, just to the top of that second notch. So it's just to the top of the second notch there, which is perfectly fine. So we didn't overfill it, which is great. Great news. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, check out 4 Real Motion and the GTSTech.com. Uh, we'll see you guys soon.